Hey YouTubers, welcome back for another adventure. Today we're going to be talking about this Sun L, and I did some more research into it to figure out what it is and how to go forward with it. First of all, it's known as the Sun L SIGK-150 or Sun L Alias 150. It's got a GY6 style engine, um, short case. It's approximately a 2008. These things cost approximately $2,500 new. Um, the guy called it salvage, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And I have a carter that um, unfortunately got burned up. And we're going to take a look at that one and do some comparison. Um, first of all, one of the questions I was asked... Uh, Rednecks Life asked this question. By the way, good guy, go check out his channel. He said, how hard is it to get in and out of and so forth? I'm about five, nine, eight, a little over 200 pounds. And it's that hard to get in, and that's how I fit, right? No problem. This particular one, both seats adjust, so I guess that answers that question. Um, I put some time into this thing, finally, uh, because when I asked about it, the person I bought it from kept saying the word salvage, salvage. He thought it was a 250 cc. It is not. It's only 150 cc's. Um, but when I pushed him to where it came from, even after I purchased it and it was sitting on the truck, he kept using the word salvage. Um, one of you guys indicated that a lot of times um, when something is salvaged, um, they'll put paint where the where the problem is and I took the spare parts out of the truck and this one might have been a burn up though as I look at this and by the way got the little notchy thing here and I look down at the um, right that that would put it on in this direction I really don't see anything that burned up in the box to cause that fire so I'm not I'm not exactly sure what the story is this is the torque converter side and um, if it was in trouble I mean this is just plastic it would have melted right um, the rubber end of it would have melted off and so forth so I'm not I'm not quite sure what transpired it came with two gas tanks um, this one, which I thought was the one that would possibly go on it, but it is not, and well, I'll show you why I think that, and it came with this gas tank. So there's, there's the two gas tanks. Let's just take a quick moment with the carter, and then we'll, um, we'll talk, we'll go back and talk some more about it. This is the carter, and, uh, I got this from you, Dizzy. You guys all know you, Dizzy. Go check out his channel. Anyway, um, you can see the way where the gas tank bolts on there, there, and this two over there. Obviously, this thing had a major <laughs> fire, <laughs> no fooling around fire. I don't know. Could this CDI be saved? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's obviously uh, done. Um, I mean, it's just interesting. Take note, uh, seat adjuster, one, this one doesn't have two, the look of the steering wheel, right? So, yeah, just, uh, I mean, little things like the stop and go pedals underneath, right? I think you guys could see them, where everything's located. So, the way I think it works with these rigs is it doesn't really matter if it says Carter or Sun Isle or Tau Tau or um, 
Trailmaster. I've I've seen some stuff with Trailmaster. It it seems that they buy the individual components and then kind of somewhere or another they put them together. Um, so back to that quick gas tank comment. I always wonder how I end up with stuff, you know, how how, how it got to me. And I'm thinking at some point this thing went through some kind of auction. Um, so yet another auction wonder in my in my fleet. Um, and whoever bought it, it looks like they they put some time and effort into um, the wiring here. Like that, that particular crimp connection right there is not standard. Um, this is not standard. See the extra grounds on the motor there? That is not standard. So, I'm, uh, you, you know, there's another non-standard crimp. So, I'm thinking somebody ended up with it and for whatever reason could not get it to spark properly. One of the, um, one of the guys, one of, one of my tuber buddies here, he indicated his had all kinds of vacuum leaks. And I'm like, really? Um, and looking at this OEM hookup here with all these vacuum lines and I don't know where that goes, right? I believe that having vacuum leaks would not be all that difficult looking at this motor. This thing also has some kind of electronic choke situation on it. So, um, Homie isn't liking any of that. And what my thoughts are for this thing is I'm going to take the carburetor off and I'm going to measure the, um, the carburetor barb, so to speak, the intake of the carburetor and see what other kind of carburetor I can get on here. One other thing to note is um, this bend brings me fairly flat up against the engine. I don't know how well you can see it. There's not a, a bunch of space. Um, this carburetor has a pretty small bowl on it, so... Um, I might also spend a few minutes looking around to see if I can improve that, get it up a little higher. Um, once again, you guys, I showed you where the gas tank went and so forth. Um, I checked the oil on this thing, and the oil looked really, really good. We did the compression test on it. It came in at about 140. So, um, those are two other things to discuss. I also... Well, you know, spending a few minutes on it, I found that coil and that other piece of rubber. Um, I found those under the seat, um, leading me to believe, once again, somebody was troubleshooting a spark issue with this thing. Um, it did come with the keys, right? And I guess... You know, there's the old start. If you read here, that says flame out. That says headlight, horn. I guess this was the signals. Um, this is reverse. The Carter does um, reverse a little differently. The Carter reverse is um, over there in between the seats. So, um, I think... I think that's all, yeah, once again, given the size of this exhaust here, I mean, right, um, there's, there's no way this is um, uh, 250 cc's. Interesting, the way, I mean, this, this is for the kickstart. You can see it's a spline shaft down there, and they used it to hang the muffler. <laughs> Um, it would have been useless as a kickstarter, obviously, right? You have too much in the way to get a kick out of it, but um, 
it's it's interest interesting the way they recycle things uh, I guess this was to put charges t to things uh, there's the battery wires I have um I have a lot of you know fussing about and sorting to do to get to the point where I could uh I can show you guys how what I'm going to do with the wire harness and so forth. This was the other piece they included. I just wanted to make sure that it was the right one to go on. I mean, obviously, we discussed the gas tank thing. People are not beyond uh, just, you know, kind of cleaning out the garage and including parts that don't necessarily go to the cart with it so um sorry and a little well a little sorry because i have a lot of money tied up in it by the way i paid too much for this for anyone out there who uh who's looking at this kind of situation everything considered i bought this at night it was dark it, you, you know i was tired um i was rushed i had been chasing this deal for a while so i was a little more anxious than i should have been um i paid too much for this this should have been 300 bucks um uh, the right price for this thing was 300 not 450 like i paid so um if, if you guys should calibrate yourselves like this, I'll probably be okay because the motor, I think the motor, I'll be able to get it to run and all. But one, one should not make that assumption. There's no reason for me to have believed that when I bought it. So I paid too much. Um, if you're buying a frame like this and you're going to redo it and throw a 200S motor on it or... You're really going to redo it and do the whole torque converter and reverse and all that other kind of stuff with it. A much, much, much better number is 300 than 450. An even better number is 200 or 250 or 150 or even free. But um, yeah, three, 300 should have been big money for this. I paid, I paid too much. Um, I once again, I think I'm going to be okay because. I got 450 into it. If it cost me $100 to get it running for 550, uh, you, you know, I'll I'll be okay. It's it's worth more than that once it's running and driving and all. I mean, the brakes seem to work, the steering works, the tires seem to be in pretty decent shape. Cosmetically, it's not bad looking. You, you know what I mean? So if I if I have 550 into it, I'm okay. But if I had 450 in a blown motor. Um, to put a motor in it by the time you get done with carburetor and all that other stuff it could have been easily another 450 which puts me up at 900 and these things I see them for sale for you know 800 to a thousand 850 so you know what I mean or if you try to put a predator into it a predator is a hundred torque converters a hundred the reverse gear on the torque converter is like uh, 150 so I mean that that's 350 400 there too so um, yeah I paid I, I think I paid I paid too much some of you guys indicated that and and I think you're right I think I'm gonna be okay assuming the engines okay and it doesn't doesn't have a toasted uh, reverse or uh, a toasted belt torque converter in there um, I think don't know but I think I'm gonna be okay but uh, I did pay too much for this um so that's everything I know about this if anybody finds one I figured I, I'd, I'd fill in um, everyone once again they appear to be the same whether it's a Sun L a Carter a trail master all this stuff um, all this China doom buggy stuff appears to be very much the same. It just appears to be whose name they put on it this week or this year, this year. So, okay. Um, I hope this helps. I want to thank everybody for watching and commenting and subscribing and pushing the thumbs up, um, and telling me what they think. Okay. Take care now, folks. Bye.